I don't need the money. If I give up my job, maybe. We're live. We're live, by the way. Good afternoon, folks. It's your local madness session. With short and shorter. I hope to God I didn't say anything then when you said we're live. No, I don't think so. No, I'm just talking it's, it's, about giving up my job, folks, and becoming a lady of leisure, as if that's <laughs> ever going to happen. Yeah. We'll oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right, let's go. Oh, someone, someone's turned up. Oh, turned up. For I had my eyes tested this week as well. I got to have glasses. <laughs> Welcome to this. Apparently, it's old age. <laughs> I went, oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Right, share. Come join. Come join the banter. And you may be surprised to hear this, but I went for the cheap and cheerful frames. They were only twenty five pounds. Who? God, I wish mine were. Oh no, they were a lot more than that. Once you put the things in, but hi, Jan. Hi, short and shorter. My son has been down in your neck of the woods this weekend. Jan, I didn't know he was going, otherwise I would have told him to give you a shout. Oh, we're S and S now. Yeah. <laughs> We've been abbreviated. <laughs> Let's do S and S. Okay. Right, we're live everywhere. I do believe. Okay, Mary's asking how the batch cook um went. Yeah. It was there's a small crowd of us, but it was lovely. Yeah, I managed good. to do enough stuff to last me till Thursday. A lasagna for dinner tomorrow, corned beef quiche, some jam, other bits and pieces. Where, oh, Jan, it's a big place, Devon, isn't it, apparently? <laughs> I'm sorry, lovely. I do know I need to look it up because I don't want to do it wrong and say the wrong thing, you know. Plus, we live on you, so maybe I will just don't want to announce it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. She's Cornwall. He's in Devon. Oh well. <laughs> oh God, you've got the wrong county. No, you've been so the sorry. Plan. That explains ah. the conversation. <laughs> Hi Anita. Tracy's just Hi, Anita. A really big hole. And I'm it. I'll get my nails out and put the coffin lid on. All right. Sorry, Jan. Sorry. <laughs> right. Folks. Not that far from each other, though. What are they? They're big counties, obviously not as big as Lincolnshire because we're one of the biggest, but you know, they are big. <laughs> yes, that, I would call that a blonde moment. I apologise to all the blondes out there. <laughs> I'm high on ketones, you know, before anybody says anything. I'm not, you know. Oh, dear God. <laughs> right, back to this. We're making ratatouille. Are you sure now? Right. Well, <laughs> a form of ratatouille i don't use the recipe it, i basically do a fridge gravel whatever i've got in the fridge goes in it job done it's a good way of, if you've got old veg going a bit wimp limp bang it in it's good so i don't like limp veg though can someone get rid of her i think i'll go yes. back to from no. courgette now jan you would appreciate the courgette i've tried to dice them up all equally you know apparently to help with the cooking and i'm gonna chop some what's the other veg i'm gonna chop aubergine, aubergine. all right you get chopping ask i'll start talking so, okay here's one of... <laughs> so, at the bottom i have courgettes funny how we've all got courgettes I've got a few mushrooms that were left over. They've gone in. I've got a red pepper, you know, one of the long sweet ones in there. Um, I've got a shabot in there. And that is it. I was going to put some runner beans, some of my green beans in, but they, they, they've gone a bit, they've gone black. <laughs> so I thought, no, they've gone just slightly too far. So I won't bother with them. Uh, mm. I've got to be honest with you, um, courgettes and aubergine is what we tend to have the most when I make ratatouille. Lee will say that ratatouille in this house is a substitution for baked beans. When we were in the carb world, we ate a lot of baked yeah. beans. Yeah. We will have ratatouille with cheese on toast. Obviously now, right, 
I'm talking a keto bread, low carb bread, and it's just a go to, especially in the winter. But I've also said to Sue occasionally, just make it to your taste and just have a nice piece of chicken with it. It uh, this is simple. You don't it have is. to complicate it. And it is so nice. Just any protein, you get it. Uh, right, it's in WTF. It's also online. I'll tell you the recipe, just in case anyone is absolutely interested. So 30 grams of butter or oil, uh, garlic puree or garlic cloves. Oh, I can go get my frozen garlic. Ooh. I'll talk to you about that in a minute. 200 grams of aubergine dyes, 200 grams of courgette dyes, 100 grams of leeks or shallots, chopped, a uh, tin of chopped tomatoes, basil leaves or dry basil, whatever, or herbs, whatever you want, an optional 100 grams of pony. I'm cheating, there's my garlic. Right, one minute. So while she's disappeared, I just basically chopped up that aubergine. It took no time at all. Um, I got really good um quality olive oil, so I'm just giving it a drizzle over my veg. Okay, it says 30 um, mils, but I'm cooking this. We're all having this for dinner at five. So, yeah. It don't really matter when you're sharing it um, six ways. Bung it in and fry it off and soften it. Right. As you may have seen, Mark got some chopped frozen garlic from Morrison's. So I fried two of them to Morrison's because it was low carb. <laughs> My Morrison's don't do the bags. And apparently the bags stopped about six months ago. So they sell that. Same packaging. Oh, just a box instead of um, a bag. So what's the weight on that? 100 grams. But okay. now Mark's garlic was about 10 grams per 100 grams, something like that. It was it was pretty low. It's now 28 grams per 100 Whoa. grams. And it's like, how? The garlic. garlic. There was absolutely nothing else in it. So I really Let me check the ingredients. It's just got garlic. There's nothing on the ingredients at all. There's no ingredients on it. There's no list of ingredients on it. Wow, that's a bizarre thing then, isn't no it? Less, no chopping, cooks from frozen. And I'm like, how have you managed to do that? So in any case, I bought two because I thought I'm not faffing. So, because it's dried. Oh, right. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, but then I suppose you don't use as much then, though, do you? I don't know. No, you. Do. I mean, you don't use a lot, to be fair. So, in any case, I came home and went on Google, as you do. Now, the only, so Morrison's is that. Tesco's was 21 grams per 100. And Iceland, no, Iceland was 21 and Tesco's was 19. Didn't check Sainsbury's, that's the same place I didn't check. Hmm. But I was flabbergasted and I said to her, I said, where's the bag? You do it in bag. Oh, we have it for about six months. So if you got someone's bag, go and get it quick because they're going. But you don't use 100 grams and it, I like garlic any case, so. It's interesting though, isn't it? From company yeah. to company, how these things can change. Yeah. You know. Hmm. Okay. But also, I suppose, that's um, recyclable plastic, isn't it? So, in a way, that's good. Mm. Okay. Bag, but see, if, if you bought garlic cloves, there'd be nothing to recycle there, though. Yeah, I know, Just, but this Glazy just saying so in my pan now my veg is just you know frying off gently softening down the key to a good ratatouille is let it simmer for you know once you've added the tomato on that so it, it really reduces down and gets no, rich the key to a good ratatouille or anything with veggies saute the veg down so it's soft then you extract all the flavour. You bung the tomatoes in now while that's just in a couple of minutes. You haven't got the flavour yet. Oh, Waitrose. Oh, I don't know if I'll go in Waitrose. 
Oh, okay, okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. I've got posh friends, you know. Maybe they'll go and get me some. You do have Waitrose in your area. I've been there with Ira. I'm sure I have. Yeah, I wouldn't have taken you there. I'll take you to be an Oh, talking talking about Ira, she's in my neck of the woods next week. So hopefully, hopefully, we'll have an informal chat and a coffee. Oh, excellent. And maybe lunch or breakfast, whichever we decide. Back in the mouth. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So come on then, guys. What are you all cooking out there for your evening meal? Come on, I need some inspiration for next week. I've got this week covered, but for the week after. So basically, so I can shop ready for next Sunday. Any ideas? I do like Jan suggested yesterday uh, a vegetable tray bake with either chicken or sausage because we all like sausage in our house. And I haven't done a tray bake for a while, actually. I love a so tray bake. That's one that's going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Me, I'm eating at work. So what have I got tomorrow? I've got meatloaf at work tomorrow or something else. Tuesday is the chicken and leek pie, so I can have that. It's saving me some money, this. Yeah. Wednesday is a roast. We always have a roast on Wednesday. Then I'm off Thursday, Friday. There you go. I cannot believe that a certain supermarket, when I was looking this afternoon, have the uh, Christmas slot delivery slots available from sometime this week. I cannot, but you know, I'm really, really surprised. People want to get them booked in, don't they? Oh, Lucy Lewis, I saw that kind of and I bought a little bit of very nice. I got, I got to be honest with you now, though, since we've been living this way of life and we all eat the meats and meats and eggs and cheese, I you feel like worry. I don't need to worry about the delivery so much now because, let's be honest, though, I source my meat from different places. I get my cheese from different places. So, oh, pork meatballs. Now, funny enough, Lee was saying about meatballs earlier, Jan. I would say you and Lee, great minds think alike, dear. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to make a trifle for Christmas, being as I brought up Christmas. And hopefully um, we're going to practice this on a live, aren't we, near a Christmas? Um, like a, a oh, chocolate, chocolate log. swish roll type log, swish roll thing, Candid you know? Chocolate. Yeah. Well, I'm having Christmas at work because I'm working. Save a fortune. Right, I've used a big pan today, so the vegetables are all quite low in the pan. So if I use a smaller pan, it takes longer because it's full to the top. So I'm happy with how soft mine is now. So I'm just going to uh, add in my passata. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've got shop tomorrow. So genuinely, I've got um supermarket passata. This is going to be shared between six of us tonight. So again, I don't worry about um carb value at my house. We don't have to worry about spiking our blood sugars or anything like that. So And it's so satisfying to know that all my tribe are going to sit and eat this with chicken tonight. I made it from scratch. Do you know how hard it is to find that scratch in the supermarket? <laughs> yeah, I think it's been about three weeks we have, Nadia, because we've been enjoying... Um, the cabbage bake, or my panda cake, I've been calling it lately, because yeah. you were going to do that, aren't you? Yeah, I've done it. I've got six portions out of mine today. Do you do double mix or one? 
just one mix. I just did the 300 bag. Okay. It's quite shallow because my tin was too big. I couldn't get okay. straight. But it's fine. Mm -hmm. Hello, good day, good day, ladies. Hi, Amelia. Mm -hmm. If you want a feel good movie, you know, if you just want to sit and watch like a Mills and Boons type of movie, Netflix is on the. T it's only because she said good day, ladies. It's an Australian film, I think, with a British actor in. Uh, Love in the air on Netflix. We watched it last night. We weren't having a romantic evening or anything. It was just like I was so tired. I didn't want a complicated thing to watch on TV. Easy going, predictable, but a nice watch. There we go. Happy times. We've done the film recommendation. Have we got a book recommendation now, Sue? What are you reading at the moment? Um, I don't read. I listen. I'm listening to Davinia Taylor's This Is Not A Diet. Okay. Um, listen to, if you want a good book to listen to or read, Hat the Hormones. That's a really good one really good interesting as well okay sounds good i'm reading a thriller and it's about you know a detective um trying to find two young girls who were kidnapped from a village in lincoln of all places <laughs> it is fictional guys it is fictional but sue lives in lincoln so i thought it was funny great yeah it's a good read so far Mm -hmm. you know i think i know who's I, behind I, it then you know what to read to find me okay just putting it out there yeah well it was talking about um places in there and i was thinking oh i've been there oh i've been there so that's quite nice even though it's all fictional it is all fictional guys it's made up but i thought oh i can picture that windmill and i can picture this and that because i've been there that's time to for me oh so my veg now was simmering away nicely. I'm happy to let it simmer for 20, 30 minutes on low. And then just before I serve it up, I would put a spoon of so cream cheese in it. Do you put anything in yours, Sue? No. Mainly because I haven't got anything. Right. Do you, Do you guys cook? cook fat from meat separately? I've got some topside fat. I want to air fry it. Shall I chop it up, freeze, and cook as and when needed, or do you think better to cook in oil in advance? I'd say either. Um, I I do a I, mix, to be honest with you. I don't cut fat off meat. I just cook it with it on and just enjoy it with the meat. Um, I don't do things like crackling and stuff like that. Because I actually like the pork crackling on the joint because then you get the layer of the meat, you get the flavour from the meat on it. I find it's very, I don't know, there's something missing if you cook it separately, uh, to me. It's not what I was brought up. <laughs> it's cooked on proper fat. Do you know, actually, you've just brought to my mind, I've not cooked a pork joint for a while. So mm. you brought that to me now, I think maybe... That's something I could cook next week, actually, is a pork joint. Because, yeah. again, I like the crackling on the meat. So when you slice it, yeah, you've got it does, a... It does. It keeps it moist, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you get all the flavour of the fat into the meat as well. So, but whichever you want to do. And then, to be honest with you, if I'm frying off something and I got uh, a decent amount of fat left, I keep that in the fridge. So if I did want a little bit of fat for something, um, for example, let me think, what was I cooking? And I wanted fat in the pan and I, oh, I got some in the fridge. What was I cooking? It wasn't my cheesy eggs because that's not a problem. Um, it's the life of me now. What was I cooking? I don't know. I'm really bad. I never keep the fat from the pans. Don't you? No, I don't. Mainly because there's hot all left when I do it. Because mm. I'm only doing small quantities as well. I don't do a huge amount of food. It's just me I'm cooking for. So in my instance, it's like I might skim the bottom of a pan and that's it. So... I do keep as well. I do look. Um, hello, Lee is living this lifestyle now. He's getting better with meat. I'll be honest with you, because 
there was a time he wouldn't eat a lot of fatty meat and things like that. He's getting better. He's not there 100% because I have to cook, look for a, a lean steak for him. He doesn't like it. Now, I like the fat on the end and seal it off and all the rest of it. Um, But he's getting better. So he does eat some of the fat. Not all of it, but some of it. So it's a work in progress. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I know what I was cooking. I remember now. I was making our version for brunch one day this week, corned so beef she... hash. Oh, corned beef hash. So the beef that I had in the fridge dripping that was left over um, worked really well for frying the um, diced swede in first. So I had some leftover swede diced in the fridge. Um, I bought it diced. I'm not going to say I don't, uh, you know, I prep everything because I don't because of my hands. Um, a local supermarket, you can buy a 50p a bag and it's diced and it, it works a treat. So I was frying some of that off before I added the corned beef to it. And then once I tipped it out of the pan, the fat that was around it was enough to cook my eggs in as well. So that was that. Okay, I was trying to think, what did I cook this week? Different from my cheesy eggs because I'm well known most days to start off with cheesy eggs. I can't help it. That's me. Now wrong with that. You're better off, I think, Mary, if you're eating the fat that's on the meat, then you're getting enough. You don't always need to add it. Because if you have a chicken portion or chicken breast, for example, there's no fat on that, then you need to add fat. But if you've got a nice piece of pork or some bacon and things like that, the fat is on it naturally. So you don't need to worry too much then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Come on then, any more questions? I know, it's a quiet one today. I think it's the weather, you know. Well, Lincoln, it's called hibernation weather. I think I want to make a nice stew as well, you know, just something warming and comforting. Hmm. We're doing that too soon, coming up, aren't we? We've got what? A stew with dumplings. Are we going to do something? Yeah, this, um, November... November time it is, yeah. Okay. Well, to be fair, I mean, today, where did I go? Oh, yeah, Morrison's. And I came out of Morrison's and it was, you know, that misty rain that's horrid. Mm. And I walked out and I went, oh, it's so warm. It's bonkers, this weather. Too much protein. Mm, perhaps I'll just cut down on that. You can't eat too much protein because your brain will physically tell you to stop eating it. You cannot overeat indulge on protein because you just need to have a large variety so mix it up you know um don't be afraid to have a bit of liver because liver is yep. really good for you if you like different mm. things if you eat chicken every day you know you need fish as well if you you can tolerate fish salmon is the best you know because of the omega fat is, that's in there with the oils um yeah it's just you look pulling a face there. You don't know like... panda dumpling. I've done a panda dumpling. <laughs> there is there isn't a recipe in the library yet. Um, I tried oh. to work out who sent me it, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure it was thirty grams panda flour, thirty grams of <laughs> lard, not lard, but you know the Britannia dripping. I use that. Liver is awful. But it's awfully good for you, Jan. <laughs> you could fry it in a pan with bacon and sprouts. Yum, yum. Just saying. Uh, I've just asked someone for it. Um, but what did I make with it? Oh, oh, I did like a suet pudding. So it would work. I'm assuming it would work for a dumpling. But you'll just have to tune in on that live to find out. Mm -hmm. Unless Mark gets there first. But um, I'm pretty sure it was something like that, 1330, and just put your seasonings in, your, your herbs, because I always like a herby um, dumpling. And then um, water to combine. Mm -hmm. But you don't need to. I'll have to investigate again. Okey dokey. It was, it was along those lines. And actually, someone else did one. Oh. I think there is might be one in the recipe library. 
from yonks, 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 yonks ago, and that's probably. I can't pick this up because it's too hot. I wish you could see it, but this is smelling and looking lush. Hello, Wiltshire here. Hi, Lucy. Nice to meet you. So come on then, guys. What are you having for your evening meal? You know what we're having? Ratatouille and chicken. I don't know what Sue's having, mind. Nothing. What do you mean, been, nothing? Well, I've been munching on my chicken this afternoon. I'm, I'm not hungry, so I've got an egg mousse. Oh, God, grief. How you can eat that, I don't know. Because it doesn't taste of egg. Yeah, it is, Amelia. A stew, definitely. Especially a nice boiled ham. It's a very nice winter stew in the library, just saying. Yeah. Do you know, though, I, I, I think... Sorry, carry on. The winter stew is, if anyone used to do... <coughs> sorry, <my old. coughs> um, If you ever remembered the camp campfire stew from... Oh, God, it wasn't Slimming World. It was um, a book, people. Forget who whose book it was. They were big about five years ago something like that um but it had lots of beans in it and i swapped all the beans out and put in celeriac and swede and things like that and it's so good mary's feeling a bit under the weather sorry to you there boot yeah, fried right. eggs and cheese can't fault it can't so fault it smoked salmon yeah. and cream cheese it was very lovely I actually, thinking about it, I was brought up, my mum used to make corned beef stew all the time. So all I need to do is swap out the potatoes for some swede or s some celeriac. Yeah. You know, there's plenty of low-carb veg you can use, really, can't you? Yeah. Okay, Sandra, how was it? You know, uh, you built it, so we need to know what it tastes like. She was making a lemon tiramisu. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. She started it off in batch cook earlier. Mm -hmm. Oh, but the campfire stew is good. It's okay. Got pepper in there and stuff like that, paprika. It gives it the smokiness. We got a really good recipe for no leak. Uh, no. Uh, oh, dear God. I'm really getting tongue tied. Um, leak and no potato soup so it's a case of it's maybe courgettes and leeks and it's really nice i'm looking forward to making some of that but we got a nice mushroom soup that lee and i like yeah. one of the members gave me a recipe a long time ago for a cauliflower and curry soup so you could tell i'm looking forward to the winter and getting soups back on the menu can't you because again they can be made and kept in the fridge and just warm up what you want when you want it yep what celeriac tastes like mashed? Do you know what? Peppery. You add lots of pepper and cream to it. It's really good. And butter. Cheese and broccoli. Yeah, okay. I so, don't think it's got a big celery taste. Mm, no. It's peppery, but it's not to um because oh, right. i didn't know i'd never tried celeriac until i tried it you i must admit once i joined the group and people were talking about it i made christmas last year celeriac dauphinois is, it? is that how you say so i i found it very rich i enjoyed yeah. it i think this year now it's a family favorite i'm gonna do the cabbage bake but I'm yep. going to put some sage in instead of mixed herbs because the sage, I think, would go nicely with the turkey, you know, sage and onion stuff in, you know, but it's a little sage. It works, guys. It really does. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Well, I do like celeria <laughs> chips. I do sweet chips, uh, carrot chips. Um, and the kid, I say chips, but you know what I mean, chunks of them. And the kids have a couple of each and they they don't miss the potatoes, don't tell them. You know, otherwise I'll get in trouble, you know. Ah, nice. A lovely boiled ham yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. I can understand that. 
yeah definitely i feel like that with pork at times especially if i cook a belly pork i could eat it all and that tends to be an old mag i'm not I, i'm not gonna lie if i i can't stop especially with a bit of marmite on it I have to give a shout out to Marmite Girl. Where is she? Because it's now October. I know, I know. It's her birthday soon. I know. Did I uh, say that on you? Because she doesn't like anybody knowing. Yeah, it's in a couple of days. Yeah. Oh, oh so, sorry. I slipped. <laughs> but do you know what else is in a couple of days, Sue? Do you know who or what the birthday is in a couple of days? Well, the bakery might just be two. If you go, Lucy, if you go on the website, there's like over 500 recipes now that are free to anybody. Um, there, and there's a section on soup, so go in and have a little look. I don't know what's there altogether. Honestly, I don't. Now, see that my ratatouille looks like that. It looks and smells lush. Um, the bakery. How old is the bakery this year, do you think? I said two. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm not listening. The word I say. No, I'm, not, I'm, not listening to the I'm not here, honest. Oh, no, I know. I know. I know. I know. It's it's hard to believe, but yeah. my ratatouille is reduced down nicely. Um, nice and goopy. There you go. Yeah, mine looks like that. I'm gonna leave it in this saucepan because none is gonna be left for later. Because I'm gonna just add a spoon of cream cheese towards the very end just to give it a nice richer smooth i don't know it's lush uh, i like cheese yeah you don't have to add that but that is the fat content if you want to sometimes we add it sometimes we don't uh, mm -hmm. well my ratatouille will make its way to the freezer um, yeah. so i'll just bung in some cream cheese as and when i use it if i want it Sometimes I don't even bother. Don't need it. Yeah, it, and I think it depends. If I'm having a plain chicken breast with it, then I will put some cream cheese in. But, yeah. you know, if I've got fattier meat with it, then I won't bother. I just add the ratatouille as it is. Yeah, yeah. Wow, well, from start to finish, that's 30 minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh... So what are we making in a fortnight, you know? Just Bear with. Check, just checking. Can you remember? Well, I think Gemma is making, oh, corgetti, not corgetti, zucchini bread, but it's corgetti, that's, guys. That's next Saturday. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, blimey. Where's the date? Ah, oh, ha, 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 ha. We are doing a panda cake. Oh, yes, a panda cake. So, sweet, sweet, sweet. sweet. So, I think, Tracy, you're going to use the packet mix, are you? Yeah. And I'm going to use the panda flour and make one so you get it from both our specs and see how easy it is to use and play with your flavours. Actually, do you know what? I think I'm going to do a ginger one because I love mm. ginger. Mm. Right, well, yeah. I'm going to do chocolate because i got a house full of kids and they love it. Yeah. And they like the cake warm with a little bit of cream and raspberries. So it's so easy. So easy. Are we done? We are done. Wow. Wow. There you go. Mm. Anyone want to ask any questions before we head off? So don't forget now you've had a book recommendation, you've had a film recommendation, you've listened to me natter on about nothing, but hey ho, it wouldn't be any different on a Sunday, would it, Sue? No, no, we... we oh, we, and we, just so you know, Sue, come closer, come closer to the screen, down, 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 show everybody your hair, she's had her hair done, guys. <laughs> Doesn't she look 20 years younger? She's now light. <laughs> Oh, Come what on. is panda flower? I'll, I'll let you answer that, Sue. Oh, it's a creation that Mark, uh, yeah, Mark did. Um, it's basically bamboo fibre, coconut flour and psyllium husk 
mixed in a special way. No recipe will ever be given. Um, and it is amazing. And it's truly, a game changer for us. It, it's huge. Um, you can buy it on the website. Um, if you look back into Mark and Liam's classes, on, if you're a member, in guides, there's an awful lot of panda recipes. And if you go on the bakery website, there are panda recipes there. It is amazing. You don't need a lot. You get a bag, it's 300 grams, but it goes an awfully long way. I made pastry for little sausage type tart things. And all I used was 30 grams of the flour and made mm. up like a pastry type um, base. And it, the 30 grams went round. I had enough to make six little tarts, which was enough for us all to have one each. And a little goes a long way. Yeah. It and does. also, if you make up a batch and you've got too much for what you want, wrap it in clean film. It will stay in the fridge quite happily for three, four days. Just before you use it, bring it up to room temperature again. But it's very forgiving and it's brilliant. Oh, Jan. Oh, thank you, Jan. Oh. On the iPads and I don't know how to do that. I think we need to get Jan on you as our personal assistant, you know. Yeah. <laughs> what do you reckon, Jan? <laughs> She's shouting yeah. at the screen now. I can hear her. Um, I haven't made the bread. Use I use, right, for my flatbreads and naans and things like that. I don't use the flatbread recipe. I use the white panda recipe. It's got one egg in it and it's 60 grams of flour plus other things. I use that literally for anything that I want to do with panda. It works a treat. Um, try that one, Anita. It also makes a loaf. It's smaller, so use a small tin, but try that. Okay. <laughs> uh, and you, thanks for joining thanks. us all. Take yeah. care. God bless. Much love.